Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply, and this video is to bring you a closer look at the Olympus number DCN1 in 2060. This is a cam lock. This is a pin tumbler style cam lock, and this video will serve as a visual review of the item, some dimensions, and we'll go over the cut sheet. Let's remove the contents from the packaging. Um, Olympus may not be possibly the most common company that you think of when it comes to cam locks, although maybe it should be, and the reason I say that is because um, really good, re phenomenal customer service. Um, I have, you know, a contact at the factory that we have been able to uh, help each other in individually different projects, help uh, Olympus, uh, they've been able to help me, and this came uh, to me uh, by means of that relationship as a sample and there's a client who needs has a particular set of needs and needs a lot of them and this lock may just exactly uh, suit their their purposes so this video is going to serve as evidence of what this cam lock is so this is a DCN1 and this cam lock will of course include the body it's going to include the straight cam that's uh, that you see there on the back a four tumbler, pin tumbler style lock. One of the reasons that we're looking at this lock is uh, for this client is because we anticipate this to be of a bit stronger construction than what the client is used to using in their very high volume application. Uh, this is going to include an offset cam as well along with the threaded ring to get the uh, installation done onto the onto whatever you're attaching it to. Okay, let's take a look at the rest of these parts. So the threaded ring I had mentioned, okay, that's obviously going to come over that cam lock. Will that cam will have to come off? You'll be able to thread that down that body. And I've spoken to um, Olympus. This client wanted the ability of a spring clip and the threaded nut to be able to work. In order for the spring clip to work, this body would have to be uh, modified or cut or sliced to allow the spring clip to come on and hold the lock down. Um, it's at this moment unclear if it's possible to be done on this lock. I'm waiting for the manufacturer to, um, to respond in that regard. But until that time we confirm a spring clip will work, the nut will be how you'll install it. It's going to, of course, have this anti-rotation and mounting plate that's installed. Okay, that will go onto the lock itself. Like they literally call this anti-rotation plate. Um, it will fit down onto the lock body. Okay, the screws that are included, and there are three of them, will be mounted to keep that uh, key from being able to literally force the the cylinder to rotate inside the opening. And that's why that uh, preparation is there. That is called a double D preparation. Uh, and very typical and common uh, that you'll see in preparations in uh, steel uh, filing cabinets. Uh, there are tools that locksmith tool manufacturers make, a steel punch for a double D prep, a couple of, a, 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 a die uh, basically with a nut on it, and you can um, tighten that nut down and you will push that die through the, through the door itself, or through the face of the cabinet. Uh, giving you that double D prep so that you can mount your hardware to it. Then it, of course, has this offset cam that's there. The little stop that's on the back of it <clears throat> is directly related to how you install the lock and the amount of rotation that the key will engage and whether or not you can leave the whether or not you can remove the, the key in the locked position only or the locked and locked, unlocked position. Okay, so how you arrange that. You know, you can have this what's called key retaining or not. Uh, let's take a closer look. There is a link below this video to the cut sheet. Let's take a look at the cut sheet. Okay, now this is the page we're looking at and there will be a link to the cut sheet which is here and let's go over what this lock is all about. So, first of all, Olympus is a really very, very customer distributor 
friendly company, very great, exceptional technical support. So we're dealing with a DCN1, okay? Available in three finishes, satin, chrome, polished brass, oil, rubbed bronze, one and a sixteenth cylinder length. And when I measure one and a sixteenth, that's going to be, that is from the underside of the cam, uh, pardon me, the underside of the head of the cylinder to the back of the plate that's on the rear side and I will I will show you the dimensional properties on camera <clears throat> obviously other lengths okay keying I've got a, a customer that is interested to know whether or not he can order one today and then order more of that same one that same keyway later on sure we're just gonna pick a key number this lock that I have is a 915 and we're just going to specify them 915. DCN1 by 26D by 915. And that would get us what we need. Um, cylinder length as measured with straight cam. Um, again, we'll go over that, uh, what the cylinder length is. Okay. I'm, you know, um, I'm accustomed to it being the back underside of the head to the outside of the cam. Well, this is the underside of the head to the inside of the cam which should be dimension X that's here. And indeed, that's the case. Dimension X, underside of the head to the inside of the cam. Okay, a really great job here. So now they say locks in all eight positions with two reversible cams. <clears throat> um, this unit features a lost motion cam shifter. Lazy action is what it's called. That means that you can take the key and turn it 90 degrees, move the, move the cam 90 degrees, move your key back and pull it out and the cam stays in the 90 degree position. So you can, you can remove the lock in the locked or unlocked position. There would be technically four positions as you go from 0 to 90 to 180 to 270, but you could also do that if you start if your locked position is 90 degree askew. So that's how they're coming up with eight positions. Okay, so you'll be able to lock whatever you need. It's also going to include the uh, additional um, cam that's here. And they're showing it here. They're showing it as if there's three. There's only two because the offset can be flipped over. So there are two cams and can handle these three different X, Y, and Z applications that have a specific material thickness in relationship to the length of the cylinder. So your three cam dimensions, those are important to know, but cylinder length is one inch for a three quarter inch material thickness and they're calling it one and a sixteenth cylinder length. Okay. I would really um, Uh, actually, I have misspoken a little bit. I have, I said earlier that it's inch and a sixteenth to our X dimension. It's, that might be the case. It's just our cylinder length is one inch, which is to the inside of this rotating plate that's here. Okay. So, you know, the, the issue with the one inch cylinder length and the uh, material thickness of three quarters is that you need to get the nut uh, installed and you have to have room for the nut and that's where that quarter inch this nut the thickness of the nut I will measure here and I will tell you that it is 0.165 so yeah you're gonna need you're gonna need basically a quarter inch another 90 thousandths to get it installed so this is non key retaining let's go over to the specifications can be keyed together differently alike, however you need, easily rekeyable via cylinder retainer clip. What that means is you can, you can remove the cylinder plug from this, okay? You're going to need a keying kit to pin this stuff, but you can certainly do it. Grade one, okay? That's really something else. This is a grade one cab, cam lock, and a grade one cam lock means it's been tested for a million cycles. 
zinc die cast body, die cast pin tumbler. Uh, zinc die cast is going to mean that it's uh, that that the cylinder that the cam will have some weight to it, but it'll be relatively inexpensive. Key removed in the locked or unlocked position. Now let's talk about that. That's what key retaining refers to. Non-key retaining, key retaining. Alternate key retaining shifters are available separately for key removable in locked position only. And that's going to be... Here. On page 2 of your catalog cut. This is what you would need for the key retaining version. If it's a drawer, because you'll notice that this is all the same. The only thing that's different is the prep in the center. A drawer you're going to want to have locked with the tailpiece or the, 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 uh, the cam portion vertical. A door you're going to want to have it to the side. And that's why that works that way. Okay, so you, if you want key retaining, you're going to need one or the other of these. Let's go back up to our page, page 16, I think it was, of the catalog. Nope, page 11 maybe. Page 14. Key retaining. Two reversible cams work in all positions. <clears throat> one inch face covers splintering no additional trim ring required so what they're saying is the the diameter of the head it is unusually large it is greater diameter head than you would otherwise see okay so that is actually a nice feature I suppose not not I suppose it's a nice feature okay um, the three finishes, keying information. Like I said, key differently, key to like, however you need. They can, they can do master keying, grand master keying. We can do that all as well. What's really nice about the Olympus book is that they tell you what the key blank number is. And from, I'm sure that's Kaba Ilko. That's probably a complex number there. <clears throat> Let's hop over to the Kaba Ilko catalog. And then the key blank catalog. That was a 1069L. I'm just doing a search on here. Ten sixty nine L. That is an NA fourteen by National or you know Compax. Ten sixty nine L. So that could be your blank if you needed more of these. And as I look at the key blank in my hand and compare it to this broaching that's here, this is what it looks like when you look down into the cylinder. That does appear to be exactly correct. So that's a really nice feature of this catalog. They're, they're giving you the information up front. Here's how to work our system, and that's just really great. The other two pages in this cut sheet are indeed pages 66 and 67. And let's get down to that in a moment. The straight cam, the offset reversible cam, and the anti-rotation plate, along with the lost cam shifter, all of that's included. This is what makes it non-key retaining. Okay. Now let's get down to pages 66 and 67. Here we are. Different cams for the DCN. I want to print these off because I'm sending them to a cut the lock to a customer of mine. I want him to be able to see what's included. So different cams for different applications, okay? Specialty cams. This is Olympus. They can probably accommodate special requests as well. Additional cams. Accessories. You want a little finger pull on the outside? That's awfully nice. They have that. And then again, here are your key retaining cam shifters, they call them. Number plates and kits. Those are awfully nice. You want to put some information out there that uh, this is actually not going to work. You need this one for the DCN. 
You want to put some identification on the face of the uh, drawer or the door, whatever it is, you've got it. These washers are nice and you should order them if you're going into wood. Uh, that will prevent you from having to um, use that anti-rotation plate if you don't want to. The cylinder basically goes through this and these prongs will sink into the wood. Okay. All right, let's finish up this video on camera. Okay, now to finish up uh, what we're working on, a couple of things just dimensionally to point out to you. What I was saying earlier is that the one inch cylinder length is from the underside of the head to the length of the threaded portion of the cylinder. That inch and a sixteenth includes this plate that is here. And then your X dimension was to the inside of your, your tailpiece or your cam, okay? An oversized uh, head, which is, which is indeed very nice. If you wanted that prong washer, that's going to have to fit. Um, your screw will come out, your lazy action will come out, your tailpiece will come off. Your prong washer will go on, then your nut will go on. Speaking of the nut, here it is. I had said earlier it's 160 thousandths thick. 0 0.165. 0 0.165 is the thickness of that apparently brass nut. The anti-rotation plate, you're going to need that. That's going to have to go down. Screw, let's just do this since we're here. That screw will come off. Okay. Your lazy action shifter. Your cam. And then your your plate. I'm not sure what they call this plate, but that will go on. And the confluence of how you stack this plate along with your part. Oh, so anti-rotation. That's going to go there. It's going to prevent that from moving. Then your nut will go over it and your three screws. Cam locks are going to turn. That's the bottom line. You ha if, it's, if it's wood, you have to have it. If it's a double D prep in a steel cabinet, you're probably not going to use either. I would think it'd be but I think it would be best practice to actually use your anti-rotation plate. I, I would certainly consider that standard practice. Actually, I'm going to put that on there for the client. Since we are here, thread that nut on. We'll ship it to them just like this. Okay. Then our... Um, this, that plate times exactly how that's going to lock and unlock. And then depending on how you put the entire lock back together is what's going to define not only the where it's locked and unlocked, uh, but the initial position as well. Our screw is going to go back on. There's thread lock on that screw, which is nice. Very nice individual features from Olympus. I, 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 I really wish I did more work with Olympus because I, I just I'm a firm believer in their product line and their people. I've got a they're they're just good people. They they really want to do a good job for you. Um, and after that, the only other thing that I would recommend, and this is a five pin, no no forgive me it's four pin, um, is if I was going to do a deployment of these, you see that first cut. If I if it was me, I would call the manufacturer <clears throat> on your behalf and I would ask them to tell me which key number has the shallowest cut, the shallowest cut next to the shoulder stop. That's the shoulder stop, where when you insert the key, that's where it stops because of the shoulder. I would want the shallowest cut there to give me more metal you know, as I'm turning it. Now, it's grade one, so nothing broke in a million cycles. Who knows when they stopped testing it. They could have tested it for 10 million cycles. Who knows? But it got, definitely got to a million and was certified certified as good. Okay. Now, finally, there's a link below this video to the manufacturer's page where you can pull up not only all of the Olympus products that we sell, but also a link to the manufacturer's website as well as a link to the full product catalog. 
there are any questions on the Olympus, this is their part number DCN1-2060 and a 915 key number or any other Olympus product, please feel free to reach out to us. And thank you.